What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another reaction video. This time talking about celebrities reacting to Shane Gillis's performance from this past Saturday Night Live. It was setting the internet on fire. I didn't really talk about my thoughts on the monologue as it was, so I'll be honest. It was funny. I mean, it's comedy that I grew up on as a millennial. I'm in my late 30s right now, almost 40 years old. So it's definitely words that I've heard of in comedy or just on the freaking playground as a kid that was very relatable. I'm not saying that those words are correct to use, but when it comes to comedy, it has a different context. It means something different than just being literal. So I think certain words that were being thrown out there, it wasn't really made for a mainstream audience. I'll just let you guys know that. So comedy is subjective. You guys let me know what your thoughts were about the monologue. I didn't react to it or anything like that. It's, it's hard to get an NBC video clip up here on YouTube as it is without watermarking it. So. I'm just gonna give you guys legendary comedian Dane Cook's take on Shane Gillis because I did watch this beforehand and I thought it was actually surprising. I thought he was gonna go one way about it, he went the other and it may surprise you. So let's just get into it guys. You guys let me know your thoughts along the way. A lot of people talking about Shane Gillis on Saturday Night Live last night and uh, this is what I wanna say about it. It's the hardest gig you may ever do in your life. Not because it's live, not uh, because, uh, you know, you have to prepare this, you know, supposedly perfect monologue. It's the hardest because when you walk into SNL, the environment there is very, very competitive. And it's tricky to hang with everybody because also, full disclosure, some people that come from the sketch comedy world, they're not as favorable to stand-up comics. And they start to feel like... The comedians come over and they take over the show when, if you're a sketch writer, then your tendency is to feel like this is a show for us. This is the show where, you know, we're not stand-up comics. All right, and let's not forget, too, that Shane Gillis was supposed to be part of the SNL cast just a couple of years ago before he got canceled from some old clips I did circulate on a podcast that he was on, so... Just remember that. And so there's a little bit of like, you know, I'm sure competitiveness, a little bit of, uh, you know, frustration because the people that are on the show, sometimes, not all, not all, there's a lot hugely supportive, especially when I hosted twice, a lot of incredible people. I'm not going to say who, who was welcoming and who wasn't, even though everybody knows I love Bill Hader. Bill was real and Will Forte. Um, but outside of that, a lot of people very welcoming. And then some people, it was more territorial. So Shane goes in there last night. He crushes the monologue. He does stand up his way. And whatever the opinion is, people laughed. And if people didn't laugh, it, all Shane did was expose his stand up comedy to more people that did laugh, okay? Also, there was a lot of these articles after the fact, like the next day on Sunday that were posting that Shane Gillis bombed and that's an absolute lie if you guys watch the monologue for yourself don't believe these headlines man these fake headlines saying that he bombed 80 percent of that monologue people were laughing whether that was uncomfortable laughs it was still laughs and i think they kept focusing on people in the background that weren't laughing who cares i mean like four members of the band were laughing along i mean, once again either it's uncomfortable or not it's one of those things where it's like i'm old enough to recognize that this is a joke and if i'm too young to not recognize that then maybe this comedy ain't for you um and i know that some people say oh the language and this and that you know, if you don't like what you hear, you don't have to listen. The, the truth is in this life, we have to realize you're going to hear things that you, you don't want to hear. And whether that's because somebody is uh, being funny or irreverent or ironic or ignorant or whatever, it's you can't really be the judge of that. You just got to kind of like tune it out. So like, don't be so soft, you know, walk away from something if you don't like it. I thought it was very funny. And so when you go there, when I did the monologue, both of my monologues had like really edgy stuff, but Lauren Michaels was so protective and he, with such grace and which, which, uh, by the way, like his, his, um, demeanor during the entire time as a comedian that you're there. And I'm sure Shane will talk about it on podcasts. He's so encouraging and he, he, he protects you. Right. And so 
when you go out there to do that monologue, what you're trying to do as a comic is you're trying to let people know that like this is my little piece of the show that's for me, and the rest of it is for the writers and the producers and the sketch you know participants and uh, and you're in their world. But in that monologue, Lauren Lauren says this. I'm not saying this. This is your moment. This is your show. And that five, ten, eleven, twelve minutes, whatever it might be. Also, another thing to note, if you guys did watch the full episode, and I encourage you guys to watch the full episode to make that determination for yourself if this was just super edgy, just to be edgy, or if it was actually ironically funny, or if you know his comedy, I mean, did it fit, or did he kind of tone it down for television? You guys let me know, because I don't watch much of his stand-up, to be honest. I'm more of a fan of the podcast, or as far as him being a guest on other people's podcasts and whatnot. And like I said, I laughed at the monologue, I laughed at the sketches, and it seemed like, because I don't even watch SNL anymore, I mean, I might catch it like once a month, once every couple of months because it just has been lacking in the comedy department as far as when the sketches hit but some of these sketches on this past saturday's episode definitely seemed like they were trying to fit shane gillis's edginess i mean there was a packers sketch in there green bay packers sketch in there and there's also one called fuglina where they're making fun of barbie i feel like they would not make sketches like that if it weren't for the guests that they had on. So you guys let me know. I think they were just trying to push the boundaries of edgy because Shane Gillis was on. I had edgy material. I had stuff that was pretty dark. Uh, I had a couple of things that I'm sure that uh, people were not happy to hear me, you know, go on and on about. But the truth is my fans loved it. New fans loved it. And over the years, a lot of people have written me and said they really enjoyed the monologue and they kind of understood the deeper meaning behind some of the uh, real, like, gritty uh, humor and some of the topics that I put out there. But stories for another day. The fact is this. Shane went out there. He, I thought he, I thought he was amazing in the sketches, by the way. Uh, I don't watch a lot of Saturday Night Live these days, but I watched because I wanted to see him go out there. I can't wait to hear the ratings. I think that he's probably going to have the highest rated of the season so far. So congratulations to Shane. And good on Lauren Michaels for bringing Shane back. After he went through a really, obviously, rough patch in the public eye, in the media, to come full circle and host one of the greatest institutions in comedic television that was or will be. So, for all those reasons, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, Shane Gillis, Rock the House. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I did cut off like the last like 20 seconds because it didn't really apply too much of, you know, substance and whatnot. But... You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I think it was an amazing episode. It was fun. Some of the sketches were kind of hit or miss. It could have been funnier, but I liked it. I mean, it was all right. I didn't think it was going to be as controversial as it was or that everyone kind of let on to be. Yo, if you're not watching, I mean, if you're if you're excitable or if you're irritated or if you're triggered or if you are offended by Shane Gillis, he is just the tip of the iceberg of comedians that are out there today. And yes, they've been grinding their ass off with this kind of humor. You're just new to it. All right. So once again, like Dan Cook said, and I agree with what he said for the most part, like 99 percent of the, you know what he said. Don't watch it. Don't listen to it. Don't act like it's in your face, you know what I mean? If you're a fan of SNL, you didn't like it, just change the channel. Check next week's episode out. How about that? All right? <laughs> so you guys let me know down in the comments below if you guys did appreciate mine. Hit that big thumbs up. To support the channel, consider subscribing today for more. All right, guys, I'm gone. Peace.